rise of socialism has never been more clear. Right now in America, there are forces dug in, organized, and well-funded doing whatever is necessary to make socialism happen. Today's demonstrations are part of an ongoing step-by-step -step agenda to change our country at its very core. They demand the abolition of ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, and the Zero Tolerance Policy of the Trump administration. I think we need to abolish ICE. That seems really clear. They have strayed so far from the interests of the American people and the interests of humanity. Cynthia, are you stupid? I know as an actress, you're used to saying what's on the script. And this government thing is new to you. But strayed so far from the interest of the American people? The whole point of ICE is to protect the American people from illegals who would do us harm physically and financially. And listen to this one. ICE isn't doing what it was created to do. It's being used as his own personal uh, police force, and in those actions, it's actually making us uh, less safe. ICE isn't doing what it was created to do? ICE is doing exactly what it was created to do. Are you stupid, too? And the president is using it as his own police force? When ICE was doing its job in 2009 to 2016, was it Obama's police force? And you think ICE is making us less safe? I've got two words for you. Kate Steinle, a primer. For all you geniuses out there, ICE does not separate children and parents at the border. Border Patrol does that. And if you abolish ICE, who arrests the drug dealers and the coyotes coming across our border in droves, delivering 80% of the narcotics and 90% of the heroin here? And pray tell. Who deports the illegal who committed rape when he finishes his jail time? Should we just let bygones be bygones and throw down the welcome mat to the local YMCA, give him his food stamps and call it a day? You don't want them deported? Maybe they ought to come live with you. And Kirsten Gillibrand, a United States senator who has ambition to run for president in 2020, says... We should protect families that need our help, and that is not what ICE is doing today, and that's why I believe you should get rid of it, start over, reimagine it, and build something that actually works. Why is it that whenever a Democrat doesn't want to follow the law, they say it's broken? The immigration system is broken. ICE is broken. How about I say the tax system is broken, and we don't then have to pay our taxes, and we can go suck another capitalist country dry? That way, none of us have to pay taxes. The truth? Americans want the immigration laws enforced. Even 60% of the Democrats want that. Those laws protect jobs. And the more people who come in, especially the poor ones, the more taxes we pay for their education, medication, housing, and social services. And when we don't know who's coming in, we cannot screen for gangs and drug dealing operatives. Not to mention, none of this is fair to those immigrants who played by the rules. The narrative of today's protest is backwards. Those marching object to adults who cross the border being separated from their children. It happened even before Trump was president. No one cared, objected, or protested. Trump issues an executive order to end the family separations, and yet they still march. So what's going on? The overarching message is that illegals, people who do not respect our laws, are entitled to everything that we Americans are, that they're being wronged by Americans if we don't share our wealth, our capitalist success, and our way of life with them. This, my friends, is socialism. Like the Women's March, these anti-Trump protests are extremely well organized, and they are more than political. They are ideological. We are witnessing the evolution of a socialist coup. And if you don't believe what I'm saying, take it from their mouths. Did you hear it? 
F your borders, F your walls. We will make your system fall. This week's primary win by a 28-year-old socialist congressional candidate who took down a well-funded long-term New York congressman is about more than one district. And although Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez deserves credit for working hard, she won with the assistance of the Democratic Socialists of America. And don't forget, a little-known socialist from Vermont would have been the Democratic candidate for president in 2016, but for the Hillary Clinton corruption of the Democratic National Committee. And make no mistake, folks, socialists are beginning to win elections at the state and national level, defeating even long-term incumbents, and expect more hard-left Democratic candidates to run. You know, even Obama's cradle-to-grave fictional ad called The Life of Julia suggests an anti-capitalist socialist framework. And for those of you who need reminding, socialism doesn't work. The crushing poverty and violence in Venezuela is just the latest example. According to the Wall Street Journal, people go through garbage bags full of rubbish to take whatever they can and then try to sell the empty bags. Socialism, when private property and the distribution of income is subject to state control, hasn't worked out very well in Sweden either. National health care, far from what they promised. Pregnant mothers are turned away from maternity wards because of overcrowding, causing women to give birth on the street. Socialists have or want what you have. I, for one, work hard, pay taxes, believe in capitalism, and have no plan to move to Venezuela or Sweden. One of my heroes, Margaret Thatcher, put it best when she said, the trouble with socialism is that eventually you run out of other people's money. And that's my open. Tell me what you think on my Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram. Hashtag Judge Janine.